Kerbal Space Program 2 comes out this month, but Kerbal Space Program 1 has never looked better, guys. With visual mods like Scatterer and Parallax, this game looks the business. And Black Rack recently released a volumetric clouds mod. Look at this! They make the game look pretty pretty. To showcase this amazing mod, and of course my amazing skills at this game, I decided to build an SSTO that pays homage to one of the best OG KSP creators, Mr. Overfloater. You young'uns may not remember, but we didn't used to have proper plane parts in this game. Look at what the Mark III cockpit looks like! So it wasn't uncommon to build planes out of the wing pieces. Now granted, Aero was way different at this point in the game, but it was still a skill in itself, and Mr. Overfloater, in my opinion, was the king of this. And I was determined to build a beautiful custom SSTO in Mr. Overfloater's style. And and I think it turned out pretty well, but it flew horribly. I couldn't really get it to work, it would just nosedive all of the time. I guess I probably didn't build it right, and Aero has changed a lot since Mr. Overfloater was active, so... Uh, you know, you can try and build your own if you want. But the reason I'm showing this to you now is because, gosh darn it, I didn't want my efforts going to waste. Here's, so I'll show you the clips. I'll upload a fuller length video of this project to my Patreon and for my YouTube channel membership scheme. So, hey, there's a plug if you want to sign up to either of those. It's super cheap. Link's in the description. But yes, deflated and defeated, I wasn't sure what to build. Then, I discovered this screenshot on the Kerbal Space Program 2 Steam page, and it inspired me to build what I think this might be. Basically, a space shuttle that gets launched off the back of a rocket that has wings and can fly itself back to the Kerbal Space Center to be reused, or to put it less weirdly, a fully reusable shuttle system. And that's what I'm building here. Or at least, this is the, uh, the second iteration of what I built. The first attempt looked like this. Visually, it's closer to the KSP2 screenshot, but this is way, way overbuilt, and the first stage could basically get the entire thing to orbit, so it was pretty dumb, so I scaled things back for this version. One goal I had set in mind, though, was that, for once, I wanted both stages to be recoverable in stock Kerbal Space Program. Now, usually when I do these sorts of missions, I have to do a quick save before stage separation, film myself recovering the first stage, and then, you know, lose the second stage, and then reload that quick save, go back and film myself fly the second stage on, and unfortunately lose the first stage. This is just due to limitations in Kerbal Space Program, because you can't switch crafts in an atmosphere and stuff, but... But, with the right flight profile, it actually can be done. And that's what I'm going to attempt with this mission. I haven't shown you the entire build, because quite frankly, you know, it gets a bit repetitive, doesn't it, watching these KSP time lapses. And also, I wanted to keep things, certain things a surprise, like the cargo of the space plane, etc, etc. But here we are on the launch pad, and here we are launching. And yeah, we absolutely uh, flew off the launch pad pun. <laughs> uh, that's because we've got a very, very high thrust weight ratio in this beast. I'm not speeding up the footage here because I really want you to be able to appreciate these beautiful volumetric clouds. So if you're not used to cloud mods in Kerbal Space Program up until now, they've been a very superficial affair. It's just been a single kind of one pixel thick texture, I guess, for want of a better description. I'm sure I could do a better description than that. I haven't really thought about it, but I wanted to kind of get my words out quickly so I could talk about the clouds while they're still on screen. We punched through an admittedly very thin cloud layer, so I guess it wasn't the greatest showcase of the volumetric clouds, but I hope you kind of got the gist of how they work and what they are. They have volume, hence the term volumetrics. They are an actual 3D model that you can fly through, and I know I said I wanted to make this video to showcase the mod, and this has been terrible so far in terms of a mod showcase because I just punched through the clouds in a second, but... We're going to be flying two vessels back to the Kerbal Space Center, and that will obviously involve them interacting with the sky and therefore the clouds that live in the sky. Uh, now, you may have noticed I took a very steep ascent profile compared to the more standard gravity turn that we do in Kerbal Space Program. And that is because, as mentioned, you can't switch between a craft in space and a craft in the atmosphere in Kerbal Space Program 1. Hopefully you can in Kerbal Space Program 2, you know, that remains to be seen. So, I needed the first stage to be in the vacuum of space while I performed the orbital insertion burn with the space plane, and also for the first stage to still be in the vacuum of space after the space plane enters a stable orbit, which requires a very steep ascent profile. 
which is obviously not very efficient, but in the grand scheme of things, it's very efficient because it means that every single stage of this rocket can be recovered. And I guess it also saves a bit of fuel in the uh, return to the KSC for the first stage, that is, because obviously we'd have to do a very big boost back burn like we would if we were on a, you know, big arcing trajectory. Why do you think Falcon 9 lands in the sea? Because SpaceX like burning money? No, it's because uh, it's because it takes a lot of fuel for the booster to burn all the way back to land. So instead, they put a boat down in the sea, and that means that the boost back burn doesn't have to be as big. That being said, we are going to need some help, though. We have completely run out of oxidizer now, so we can't do any more boost back burning using that mammoth engine at the base of the rocket. But as you can see, we have some extra liquid fuel in our tanks, and we have four whiplash engines that can get us the rest of the way back to the Kerbal Space Center. And hey. This gives us a golden opportunity to talk about the clouds, which once again, it's a fairly light cloud cover here. But I hope you now get another opportunity to see these volumetric clouds. At the time of me recording this commentary, which is the 31st of January. Uh, oh, look at that little Doppler flyby shot using camera tools. But yes, uh, as of me recording this commentary on the 31st of January, the mod isn't out to the public. You have to be a member of Black Rag's Patreon, but it's only like... Uh, four dollars, I think, is the uh, US charge, so it's not that much. Support the creators and all that, and uh, yeah, you get, a, you get early access to the mod. So that may well change at some point. I'll put a link in the description to the official mod page for this mod, which is incorporated into the Environmental Visual Enhancements mod, uh, and then you can kind of follow links on that page to Black Rack's Patreon if it's not yet been added to the public release. But there we are, we have touched down at the Kerbal Space Center with a light smattering of clouds in the sky. How beautiful is that? We'll do a quick pan around of the first stage of this rocket, zoom out, and then we can do an epic crossfade to the space plane that is currently in space. Uh, yes. Now we can open up the cargo bay doors and take a look at the amazing, brilliant, wow, wasn't the surprise worth it, uh, cargo. Okay, it ain't much. It's just a little probe. It's going to land on Minmus, but... You know, I, I think the focus of this video was kind of A, Black Rack's amazing volumetric clouds mod, and also the, uh, I guess, the launch system itself. The payload, I didn't want it to be this big fancy thing that took up most of the video, so it's just a quick little Minmus lander, but I think it's, uh, I think it's pretty nifty nonetheless. Definitely looks like it's compensating for something though, eh? <laughs> I, I, I couldn't resist having that Magneto meter boom extended for the whole of the flight, because it just looks, it just looks ridiculous. <laughs> But I hope you can be entertained by its ridiculousness. Uh, here we are deploying it and closing in the cargo bay doors of the space plane again. Don't worry, the space plane will return. You will see me return it to the Kerbal Space Center. I know it's not got that much fuel left over, but we can make it work. We can glide it back. It's not a problem. Don't worry, guys. I'm just going to do a very, very... I'm not, I'm not going to cut anything out necessarily, but I'm just going to show you a very quick uh, Minmus mission to really showcase that this probe works. You know, it's not got... A huge amount of delta V, right? It's only got 1500 or so meters per second of fuel. So, I'm like wondering, oh, can it get to Mimbus? And I'm going to show you guys right now that yes, it can. Yes, it can. I'm going to do all the science. And uh, yeah, fun fact, actually, you know, <laughs> I um, I, I initially loaded that. I was like, 1500, I could probably do the MUN on that. So, I started doing the MUN. And then I realized I couldn't. Then I tried to do, oh, well, maybe I'll just try and play it off to the audience. Like, oh, I was going to do a Mun Gravity Assist. And hey, this is funny. We can get to Mimus. But I just couldn't make it work. And I'm like, I'm going to have just, I'm just going to have to reload a quick save. So you guys will be able to tell probably using the system time that's in the Kerbal Engineer readouts precisely when that quick load happened. But uh, yes, I'll leave that up to you. And if you guess it correctly, uh, if you get the first comment guessing it correctly, you win. Um, Nothing, but hopefully like you know the other users give you thumbs up and that gets you high in the rankings And that means something I guess hopefully <laughs> I suppose YouTube isn't like reddit where you get fake internet points for getting you know Like highly liked comments and things which is probably for the best I've noticed recently the Kerbal Space Program memes subreddit has been getting so there's basically all of the uh, the posts that make it to my reddit newsfeed these days are reposts of things from the top of all time and I know this because and I don't want to sound arrogant or narcissistic, but a lot of the posts from the top of all time on the KSP meme subreddit are from me. They're like, oh, see, Matt Lount, oh, see, check out that one on screen. Oh, wow, what a meme. Uh, yeah, so I, I just recognize like, I made that. I remember making that and now it's here and it's been posted by someone 
without even bothering to change the title or whatever, and I've just started noticing a bit of a trend that, like, half the posts now, it seems, that make it to my Reddit newsfeed are just reposts from the top of all time. So, uh, what I'm saying is, guys, make me mod of the KSP meme subreddit. I don't want to be mod, because I like posting memes to the KSP memes subreddit. I've said that sentence and phrase so many times now. Uh, so, uh, it would just seem like, oh, another mod post, blah, but, you know, I'm just... I've just said, I just needed to get it out there. I need to put it out there to an audience that might somewhat care. Um, <laughs> that's a no. And hey, you know, I never fail to deliver, do I? I for the entirety of the most critical point of the Minmus landing, which was, you know, the landing on Minmus and doing all the science and transmitting it and all that, I was talking about memes, which I guess is par for the course for this channel. Uh, YouTube algorithm, please continue promoting this channel in the uh, run up to Kerbal, Kerbal Space Program 2. I'm, I'm, I really want to, uh, uh, you know, survive. <laughs> the, uh, I'm guessing, I don't know, I'm really curious to see what happens with, you know, YouTube and when Kerbal Space Program 2 comes out. Am I going to get, like, a big boost in the algorithm? Loads of people watch these. Am I going to get, like, way more subscribers? Am I going to get way more views? Or will it be, like, pretty much par for the course, normal? Because, you know, the big YouTubers, like, real YouTubers, not like. You know, crap munchers like me. <laughs> you know, uh, getting like PewDiePie. And is he, PewDiePie even a big YouTuber uh, anymore? I don't really know. I don't know what the kids are watching. Uh, a big gaming YouTuber. Uh, like Mr. Beast. Is he a gaming YouTuber? I don't know. He made a video recently about cataract surgery, which is right up my alley that I haven't watched. But I, I, it was about eyes. So, you know, that, there's a win. Mr. Beast, if you would like to collaborate on your Kerbal Space Program 2 content, yeah? Hit me up. I know about eyes as well. Talk to me about nuclear sclerotic cataract. Love those things. And also other things that you might want to cure in a YouTube video. Like, I don't know, um, neovascular age-related macular degeneration. Just stab some loose endus injections into the eye and you might make a difference. All of this and more. And that's how I'm ending this video. We've got the, the touchdown of the shuttle. And I am now begging to uh, to an actual YouTuber for views. And, uh, you know, if you want to blame anyone, blame the names on screen. They're the people that support this channel financially on my Patreon and my YouTube channel membership scheme. But they get early access to videos and sometimes exclusive videos as well. So, uh, yes, not sure what the message was with that. But, uh yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, regardless. And uh, yeah, shout out to BlackRock again, amazing mod. And it was a, it was a fun old jolly thing, and goodbye.